Hi there, I'm Sweet Phil, and today I'm showing you the Poison Javelin Amazon. Now, this isn't going to be the most powerful end game as build, but if let's say you've been running around a Lightning Fury Javazon here for a while, getting a little bored of it, want to do something different, waiting for the uh, first ladder here for Diablo 2 Resurrected, this is something that can be fun and interesting for you to try. Now, what is fun and kind of interesting about it, take a look down here. Um, this particular skill right here has the max damage is 138,000. That is just wild seeing that much damage on a skill, to be honest, but you do notice it's over 94 seconds. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So actually, even though the damage number is so high, with this poison build, you actually use Plague Javelin instead of Poison Javelin. But the Plague Javelin down here still has a minimum damage of 118,000. That is absolutely bananas. It is over 20 seconds though, but it still, it works really, really, really good. And this is just inter interesting to note. I was running around to get the leg to do the uh, example gameplay at the end of the video here. With this uh, skill shrine, I actually get over 132,000, almost 133,000 damage on the Plague Javelin. And actually, it's 100... And 54,000 damage on the poison one. That is incredible. So we'll go ahead and take a look now at this build. So we'll start off with the stat points first. A pretty normal spot to start off with. Now, uh, you need enough points in order to use spirit on both hands. So you make sure you swap back and forth. And make sure you get up to 156 on the strength. And for dexterity, you need 109 in order to hold the javelins that you use, so swatch, switch back and forth, make sure you get up to 109. The javelins actually give you 20 uh, strength too, so I bumped it up a little bit higher. I dumped the rest in vitality, nothing into energy. I did not particularly worry about resistances. Uh, I just decided to go pure damage as much as you could on this build. If you wanted to get some more resistances, you could uh, put different small charms across the bottom underneath the skillers that you have to get your resistances, but I actually had like little magic fine charms and a life charm and stuff like that. I just kind of mainly didn't pay too much attention to the survivability resistances down here. Uh, I mainly was focusing on getting damage on this build. Now we'll take a look at the skill tree. So uh, we'll start off with the bow and crossbow skills. Don't do nothing over here. You don't really need to, so we'll just bump past that, no need to waste any more time. Now, I went ahead and put one into jab, and I actually just go ahead and use jab for uh, monsters that are immune to, we'll say, poison, or if there's just one little monster there that I want to do a little bit extra damage on. Over here are the skills that you actually are going to use to attack, and that is uh, poison javelin, plague javelin, so they synergize with each other, the other, you can see, so I maxed out poison javelin, I just needed one into lightning bolt to get down to plague javelin, and then I maxed out Plague Javelin, so this one gets up, like I said, to 118,000 minimum damage. And actually, I'm almost, almost, if I put another, like, a little bit of mix in here and there, or I got a facet, I could probably get this over 140,000 damage, which is bananas. But like I said, it's over 94 seconds, which is unfortunate. Uh, if it was over a much shorter time, that would be uh, actually better or usable. But Plague Javelin works pretty darn good at a minimum damage of 118,000. Passive and Magic, you end up with a ton of skill points left over, because see, there's only 62 uh, right there so far that we've used, or 42, excuse me, 42 points used so far, so, ah, man, you got a ton of points you could do, and this stuff you could um, really, really, uh, you have a lot of options with six over 60 skill points with the skill quests you get, so in Passive and Magic, you can dump them wherever you want to, it's kind of up to you, but this is what I went with personally. Now, we'll just go, just put one point into everything on the skill tree, but then when you put more points, I decided to put mine, I actually maxed out Valkyrie, so it gets a ton of life, and then I maxed out Decoy, because if you see the 20% uh, per level for Decoy on the synergy here for Valkyrie, so your Valkyrie becomes indestructible, essentially. Now, you have to, unfortunately, you can't, like, cast it ahead of you, uh and then have the monsters attack it, it just randomly follows you around. It's not the best AI, but you don't really have a whole lot of other options to put the points into. Um, some people might not do this just because they want to avoid having a uh, dodge, avoid, and uh, evade on your character. I've heard some people that it just bugs the crap out of them and it gets them killed. Um, I've never had too much problems with it, but I know a lot of people will say that and they've had that problem. So I would understand if you don't want to go this route, maybe you'll just pump your points into like crit strike, and uh, penetrate and pierce. 
uh, maybe just pump up Pierce and max it out. Uh, even with that, I maxed out uh, Valkyrie and I maxed out Decoy. I put my remainder points into Pierce and I got up to 90% Pierce. Um, I'll kind of explain when we get to the gameplay why I didn't bother uh, getting that to 100 or I didn't do the... You can put one point into that and wear a razor tail and it'll get over 100% Pierce. But like I said, when I get to the gameplay part at the end, I'll explain why I didn't care about doing that. So... This, like I said, with this particular one here, your Valkyrie is essentially indestructible. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the gear on my character here. Um, so we'll just start off offhand first. Super obvious with characters. I got a CTA and a double X for show points like a boss. And I got the spirit on the other side just to get the skills to make it a little bit higher. Now on the main hand here, I decided I went with Titans here. So you get the faster walk run on it, which is kind of neat because I don't have an enigma to teleport or nothing, I just run around with this. So you get the the to overall four to javelin skills, but the two to Amazon's there. Strength, dex, you know, replenish quantity is just a convenience factor on that as well, so that's pretty cool. The other side over here, the offhand on the shield, I got a spirit. Pretty obvious for all the obvious reasons that everyone wears spirit on, like, every character, essentially. Up on the helm, I went with the Valk helm, because this helm is obviously specifically designed to use on Amazon's, you get the two to skills just like you would on a Shaco. Um, and also you get walk, run, hit recovery. And actually, I don't have any mana leech on this character. You get two to mana after each kill. So that helps out a little bit with that. And also when I get to the mercenary, you'll see why I don't need mana leech on this character. Like I said, you could obviously, a Shaco is probably a better option. But I kind of went with this just for show. Just for, you never really get to use this on a character. So I decided to go with it since it doesn't really hurt the build going with this except you lose you do lose the magic find and the damage reduction and the life of the man i guess from the shako but this is just for a cool factor i suppose over on the amulet you're gonna have to use the best you can amara's would be kind of a go-to option over here i have this caster amulet that i thought was super neat and i love using stuff that i made myself instead of just generic unique stuff that everybody else has so two to amazon skills uh actually this does have mana leech i forgot this had mana leech on it so this is actually a bleep and nasty amulet so 8 mana leech, mana, mana regen, 20 to all res. So forgive me, I forgot this had mana leech on it. That is a sick ass amulet right there. Um, so we'll go ahead and skip down here. We'll go to the armor. This is kind of a mandatory for this build. It can get up to 50% poison skill damage. I believe it's 25 to 50 or maybe it's 35 to 50. But this, I got a 45 one right here, which is pretty darn good. Um, it's got this uh, thorns all around. It's got a bunch of hit recovery on there. Um, life after kill is pretty neat on that too and some other stuff. So all around it's pretty cool. And I mean, I guess it does have these spirit barb charges on it. If you want to go ahead and use that, you can. On the gloves here, you actually go with Trang's gloves because you get that 25% to poison skill damage. Now you don't really need to cast rate. Obviously you don't need the curses and stuff like that. It's pretty much strictly for that poison skill damage there. It really, really boosts that up quite a bit. Now for the rings, I went with a Stone of Jordan on one side and a BK ring on the other. You could go with two Stone of Jordans, that would be perfectly fine, or really probably two BK rings. Um, I just put one of each just because I decided to go with that. Sorry for the stutter right there. <laughs> um, for the belt, like I was saying earlier, you could go with the Razor Tail, but I decided to get the one, two skills from the Arachnids Mesh to boost the damage up even higher because that's the route I decided to go. Also, when you throw that Plague Javelin, it really doesn't go that far before the javelin disappears. So even though you pierce stuff, the javelin just disappears in, in anyways. So I decided to get the extra skill and not really worry about that. Um, on the boots, um, you could go with a ton of different options here. I went with some rare boots that had some faster walk, the walk run on it, hit recovery, a little bit of magic find, some fire dance, res on it. But these are just kind of okay uh, rare boots. Obviously sandstorm treks you go with, water walks, all different. There's a bunch of different kind of options here for that. Now we'll jump down to the charms and generally to get the more damage you want to have as many skillers as you can. So I got skiller, skiller, skillers, and I got a Geeds. I got a Torch and Annie. Um, and then I got some random charms down here to get a little more magic find, a little more res, a little, a little bit, you know, just whatever the best charms that you have available. Really, more skillers are going to boost that damage up way higher. And then you can pop items into the cube when you pick them up. That's how you get your inventory space. And as you see down here, I actually put the tombs down in one of the, the slots for the belt to save a little bit of room, just a little bit of room in the inventory up here. 
Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the mercenary. Now for the mercenary, uh, I got insight. Uh, you know, I, I always forget kind of sometimes, luckily I remember here, in, infinity does not, uh, the conviction around that does not do away with poison resistance. It's only lightning, fire, and cold, so that's not going to help you out here. You could go in obedient, obedience, you could go breath of the dying. There's a couple other options, but I decided to go with insight so I never have to worry about mana. Fortitude and an Indarial's Visage show that my mercenary here can deal out more damage and can when you deal more damage you can actually leech more life as well so that's what i went with there on the mercenary Alrighty, now i'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of gameplay here for you uh kind of a typical place to show off we're just players one difficulty here we're gonna go out the frigid highlands we cast up the valkyrie and it has a huge massive cooldown here but uh you don't need to worry about that i go ahead and throw up spirit bar because i don't know why not it doesn't really help out that much but you got it so why not use it but I'll run up here, stick a decoy out here, throw your javelin, and you see, you don't really have to do it. You could throw one javelin, boom, everything drops dead. It does take a second, but that's how that works right there. You just throw one javelin, you can throw another one. You see how fast these do drop down. This is player's one difficulty, though. In just a second here, I will show you on uh, player's eight difficulty the difference in speed, but... Just players one difficulty, and this character is actually has tons of survivability. See, I actually forgot to even battle order up. See, I will just stand here getting hit, and just watch this. My health is barely going down as these guys are just wrecking me with their javelins. It's probably also all the dodges and evades and stuff. It's really not hardly going down at all. And we'll go ahead and use some jabs here so you can see exactly... Uh, the kind of damage you get out of the jabs. It's not much. It's not much, but it'll do some damage. You can get frozen too pretty quickly because you don't have any source of cannot be frozen. But you see jab, jab, jab. It kills monsters a little bit slow, but that's why almost all your damage comes from these plague javelins. And there is quite a bit of cooldown on that too. You see how it pierces, but it only goes this far. That's as far as the javelin will go when you throw it. Alrighty, now you can see behind my head, well it's behind the chair, but I just set the player's game, players to 8 on this game. So there we are with that, we'll send up our Merc here, we'll battle order up, because it's going to be tougher, make sure you remember that. Let's go ahead and throw out the decoy, throw out the Plague Javelin, and then you just kind of sit back and let your people go to town. Even on player's 8 difficulty, you see it working A-OK, -okay. the Mercenary's taking out a few things, the decoy is essentially indestructible as well, you see they're just getting wrecked. And nothing bad's happening to the character now. You will have to play it slower on player's 8 difficulty. But. You can still definitely take stuff out here. I wonder how the survivability will go here on player's 8. See, they're hitting me with fire damage. I'm actually dodging almost everything. They're only hitting me with one or two of those. So that's pretty cool. I know that people uh, really don't like that. but Because they say that it hurts them more than it helps them. But. It seems to be working pretty good there. The dodge and evade and dip, dodge, dive, and duck. There goes down Eldrin Shank, and this is on player's 8 difficulty, so that's, you know, it's kind of fun, not too bad. Let's go ahead and see how this character will do in cows now. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and fire up, and we are still on player's 8 difficulty, and let's see how these cows are going to go. So let's see how this works out here. I got a decoy ready. Kaboom. And this is player's 8 difficulty, so remember that. The decoy went down. We'll go ahead and cast up another decoy. Here in a second. Just to kind of keep them going. Now, this is pretty slow, I will be honest. But remember, this is player's 8 difficulty. So, um, if you were running around solo in player's 1 or something, you know... Or this could be, like, pretty good for, like, support, you know what I'm saying? This is adding a ton of damage to a large group, so it really depends on what exactly you are doing. Alrighty, so here we're fighting up players 1 cows, and let's see how this will go. We'll go ahead and cast up a uh, Valkyrie here. Let's go ahead and herd up some cows real quick. Put down a decoy. Put some poison on them. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, on players one here, they're coming, they're cutting Slade down uh, all right here. I mean, it's no uh, Lightning Fury Javas on, that's for sure, but it's doing its job. So here you go, a lot of them poison. 
Moo, moo, moo. They're going down. Wonder if jab's even worth really using a whole lot. Not really. You probably just stick to the light, the the poison javelin there. So cast your decoy up. Get him distracted. And even this, it's cows. You see the uh, Valkyrie and the Mercenary never really are in trouble at any point here. Like I said, the Valkyrie is essentially indestructible with all the health. And you're battled ordered up, that Valkyrie probably has like 10,000 health or something crazy. So yeah, if this build sounds interesting to you, head down in the comments and let me know. Peace out, guys. Don't forget, keep slaying.